good manage still meant they won that fight, but uh, his, his play's oh. been a bit suspect. Radiant Man, I've been waiting to see this guy show himself, especially with the sudden popularity, of course. Not, maybe not sudden, but the high stock value of Ember Spirit. I yeah. figured Disruptor would be something most teams would go for. And, and like, Vert is pro, but everyone had been passing on it. Faceless, go for it now. Is this enough, though, to deter the Ember Spirit pick? Remaining. Yeah, with the SF there. I, I G on big Ember back. players as well, I guess. So I think Faceless had to have maybe expected the. They banned the Tinker. The SF is the other big hero that IG run in the mid lane. So likely they were expecting this SF in the first two. And <laughs> potentially the beginning of a armor strategy, I'm sure. Ten seconds yeah. Remaining. OP loves this hero. I think it's this and Tinker were his two most plays. And Faceless, like you mentioned, Five really liked to grab the first remaining. two supports and just put it out there, Leave, try to hide their cores. As far as their cores go, very flexible Radiant plays. Jabs is one back. of the bigger hero pools of the mid lanes. Mm -hmm. Ice 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 probably has one of the biggest hero pools of any off lane player in the world. So We haven't seen much of that, the depth of his hero pool this tournament, though. But I do agree, That's he true. does have a ridiculous yeah. hero pool. It's just, we've, he's been kind of penciled in with like Mag, Nyx, Mag, Nyx, Centaur. Yeah, that's oh. it, that's really what we've seen. He's yeah, played them They've only played, well. what, four Dyer games this tournament? Yeah. So, three I heroes could, yeah. in four games? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, they, Maybe they, I'm being they, hard they, on them. EG series went three games. They played five games. So oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, no. It, it does feel like he's played at least two games of Magnus. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel like there are certain heroes he Ten leans towards. Seconds, but he's the kind of player, like, you could put him on a hero that he hasn't played in months, and you wouldn't be like, oh, is five he going to do well? He hasn't remains. played this hero in a long time. Yeah. He's just very gifted mm. uh, mechanically Radiant and has a really good eye for the game. So Faceless are put in an interesting position with their second phase of bans. They ban out the Jug, and then they go for the Weaver, which you can't really blame them based on Dying the last game performance, but you do leave out, like, that burning life stealer. I think the Jug bans necessary against like the earth spirit disruptor because of the blade fury being able to stop the glimpse back Very the true. hero builds manta against the earth spirit it's kind of like a natural counter for both the two supports Ten yeah jug's, jug is definitely the best hero versus earth spirit completely stops any of his early game uh, aggression Five the weaver band too remaining. i like this because now they took baboka's earth spirit they banned out his weaver so they're kind of limiting his potential to go for those aggressive Reserve type of early time. early uh laners and banning yeah uh, this is definitely appropriate by ig focusing their bands onto ice because just we've non stopped talking about him. I mean, yeah. this guy is. <laughs> He's been there comes the Knicks. The standout player for, <laughs> for Faces, probably. Yeah, definitely their standout player. And more, yeah, it could, it could definitely be the Knicks. They're very magical damage oriented then, but definitely a possibility just because of how successful Ice is on the hero. And with their couple of supports already shown here. I like Lifestealer for them, but okay, they go for the Jabs Invoker. They don't have to, I mean, they know the matchup already, so it's like you don't need to hide your mid uh, too much longer, if that's mm -hmm. what you're thinking. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking they would take ah. the Lifestealer for that exact yeah. reason. <laughs> you know, as soon as IG is able to, they take the Burning Lifestealer, which they yeah. favor highly. Yeah, very, very comfort pick for the Emperor on this one. And uh, they do have to get something here, probably for the safety of the Shadow Fiend. He's very suspect to getting hit with that early laning aggression from an Earth Spirit, so... Didn't they go for, I believe, a Dazzle Five in the last game? Like they they oh, floated yeah. around him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they need to do that again, but we'll have to see what the option's mm -hmm. going to be. Reserve I would like the Dazzle time. for IG this game, too. You think with mm -hmm. the Rubik? Oh, actually, yeah, that's true. With the Rubik. Like, last game, bit. they had the, like, Dazzle in place of the Rubik, like, mm -hmm. roaming between safe lane and mid, and then they contest the off lane with the Weaver. I wonder if they're just going to get that aggressive, like, four position type hero to contest the off lane, or... Who would that be, though? I mean, Bounty Hunter, Tusk, but we haven't seen Tusk really this... Uh, yeah, the big event. ones are banned out, like the, the Pudge, the Weaver, so it's yeah, a bit, and Earth Spirit's taken, so it, it is a bit more limited as far as partners for that offlane go. I mean, they haven't picked the, the offlaner itself. Hmm. Well, Spirit Breaker, we saw that at the back end of yesterday, but I don't know if we will see Faceless yeah. opt to go for it. So, hmm. For Faceless, yeah, I wonder if they, oh. they can pick up Ice Ice Ice's here. Yeah, Dark Seer? What about just Dark Seer? It's great with the Earth Spirit, you know? Good for the Wombo combos as well. It's... Yeah, it's, I think it fits pretty yeah. solid. Okay, they go for the Slark. So All right, save. Radiant ice, ice, ice team pick. pick. So the Black Slark. Mm -hmm. It feels like a lot of Faceless's draft always kind of built around some of their just comfort heroes. Yeah. It do, I mean, not to say they have weak drafting, but um, they they seem to like say, okay, we're going to pick this hero because we know this play is good. Like when they're first picking Witch Doctor. Um, the Earth Spirit and the, the Disruptor, the support is also here, is that like, they, the players are at least played a bit of. Oh. Is this a tournament debut? I don't think I've seen Undying yet. We've seen it banned, banned multiple yeah. times, but yeah, this is, this is what we're looking for, though. This type of dual laner that can 
uh, be in the enemy face. And yeah, remember. Everything else was taken out, so this is a Baboka here. And it puts a lot of pressure on Slark. In That's the, the big phase. thing. I mean, remember IG's matchup versus Elements Pro Gaming. That's what they did to Swift Ending. They just yeah. took it to him in the laning phase, and he was just unmercifully crippled. And yeah. even Black experienced a bit of that uh, in the tournament, too. Yeah, someone dying plus one in the off lane. And they will force Faceless to probably commit or spirit to the safe lane, just have to do a full-on tri lane. But yeah. that's kind of, I think, where Faceless lane best is when they have their full 3-1-1 setup. They're one of the few teams who don't dual lane, but I think it works for their play style. Ice 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 is better, like, kind of on his own often. And Radiant team they pick back. these carries for Black that need support. Like, he's playing a lot of Slack. You can't just dual lane a Slack if his lane's being contested. Mm -hmm. They ban out the Nyx Assassin. And, okay, all the offlaners are pretty much oh, banned. Good. What's I think we're going to need something new. <laughs> there's what, there's the Clockwork, the Sand King. Sand King. Okay, so they go for the Sand King. Axe is still in the pool as well as the, the other one I was looking at. But against, uh, I mean, Rubik Lifesteal is potential for a lot of different heroes maybe to fit in. They're tied to hero that Ice 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 has played a lot of. This puts a lot of pressure on faces to safe lane. So, yeah, definitely going to have to run that safe lane tri lane because Sand King is undying. Those remaining. two heroes against the Slark, that's probably his nightmare. Five seconds Last remaining. hero coming out from Ice. The Axe. Do they ever play offlane Enigma? <laughs> We've been talking about it a lot through the I tournament. I've seen Ice play it once. I played it during that Timbersaw. tournament in Thailand. Ah, so there we go. The Ice Timber Saw. So I mean, is, uh, this guy has a good. set <laughs> yeah. named after him on the hero. He's pretty good on Timber Saw. How do you feel about the Timber Saw pickup, though? It's I greedier. Think, I think it it's greedy. A lot more farm. Mm -hmm. I, I think they realize Slark's going to not have a good time, so I, so they're probably thinking, like, all right, let's get another core in the offlane since that lane will do better, so let's make it like a more high impact hero, maybe. But I'm really liking IG's draft. Yeah, I think it, they have their comfort heroes as well as great heroes that work versus Slark, and I think it's a bit too greedy coming out from Faceless. Every, every single one of these heroes kind of takes time to come online while IG only needs, like, they get their armor on the life sealer and it's go time. Blink Dagger is just like, it's great for the Sanking, but he's not really in total need of it in this game. And yeah, I'm just really liking that they have a sustained hero as well, which seems to be kind of coming more, into, more and more into favor after 7.1, just having someone to keep you into pushing power into, into uh, team fight potential. Are you in agreement there? Five yeah, I definitely remaining. on the same page. Like the invokers, like if you have some kind of tempo mid, then the Timber Soul Slack can work a bit better, but I do feel like it's very greedy. If they want to get away with it, they need like a lot of plays to be made from the support. And we just haven't seen that from X, Y, and Nuts. If this was like a Jerex or a Spiro thing, I'd be like, okay, they can maybe make it work. They've got this godly support play who's going to create space, but... I feel like IG is going to have this game. Yeah. All right, two for IG. We'll see if that's going to be the case or not. Remember, you can go over to g2a.com slash DotaPit for all those giveaways, but it's time for some more Dota action. Let's throw it to the side right now. It's Toby Wan and Merlini. So the panel are going to lean the way of Invictus Gaming. I remember once before when we were here on the Dota Pit stage, everyone was saying that MVP didn't really stand a chance, and they fought hard. They managed to actually get all the way through. Ben, are you with the panel? Are you saying that IG have got this slightly in the bag? IG have a e easily a better early game lineup, and I think that Faceless are going to struggle a lot in the lanes. I will have to paper IG a little bit because of that. Jeb's using that early shrine. You won't see that too often for some more intel with the sun strike. I don't think he saw anything though. I do like the Timber Saw aspect. I think it works really well versus uh, the three strength heroes on the side of IG. They don't really have that much that can pierce through his uh, reactive armor at the start. And I think it's also going to be a really fairly easy laning phase for him. Yeah. I've seen Burning do this once before. Last time he had friends, uh, as well as a TP skull. But he'll get the rune, but will he lose his life for it? A rage, a walk, a body block, up for ice, 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 and they're going to get him. Burning will fall. All of that for a bounty rune. The respawn and TP he down the bottom it. lane. Who did it go to? Invoker. You're right. He actually missed it too. Oh, that's... uh. Well, that's a good start for, for Faceless. Definitely he, something they, they wanted. I think he raged a tiny bit late and got hit by the boulder. This allows now the PMS to be completed, uh, completed on Timber Salt when the laning phase begins. And you've still got the Earth Spirit who's down here to help out Ice Ice Ice. With a pickup, the throw down, roll forward. Looks like XY trying to help out. Burning is low. It's the Whirling Death 
that Ice 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 went at level one. Instead of going for the defense, instead of going for that aggression, they're going to burn through so many of the consumables and burning knows he has to body block or else they'll lose the Rubik as well. Well, we talked about uh, Faceless is safely being under a lot of pressure, CT and dying, but it's actually IGs who's become heavily under fire, burning. Already struggling, he had to buy a TP scroll, already had to go through a lot of his regen just to deal with this Timber Cell. And Timber Cell has free level two. And as you mentioned, the poor man shield, he's kind of unstoppable in this lane right now. You see him just walk straight past. He's fine with this. He'll pick up reactive armor charges. He goes for a walk. The rolling boulder from Earth Spirit can X, Y. Uh, he's, he's not going to commit to it. Instead, they turn around, look back towards burning. This is exactly the sort of Earth Spirit rotations that they need in their early game to try and put some pressure off Black and his Slurk. Yeah, it stops the aggro trial lane from happening from Invictus Gaming. The rolling boulder ah, misses from XY. Brings him in range of a range creep. So uh, combining that up with the Rubik will be a little bit of chip damage. But with an orb of venom, Earth Spirit kind of wins the, the runaway duel. But there is a two minute rune spawning. I wonder if he's going to try and go for it. Nope, will not roll. That's double damage rune. That's for XY. How's that mid lane looking? Invoker. Going up against SF looks uh, fairly even. He went Wexort, and he's actually losing in terms of CS, so that's really, really bad for the Invoker. Well, normally he'd have help. Normally it's, it's the Earth Spirit that would rotate in to try and help. I suppose until you've got the until you got Quas, until you got like that one point up to have Cold Snap, is it really worthwhile rotating the Earth Spirit into the mid lane? Uh, I think it's you need it a little bit later. Like generally, the Shadow King struggles at like one through three. So if he's already heading CS now and it's already picked up sixteen souls, uh, then I think that it's almost a lost cause already. And Booker's already supposed to have, uh, I would say, a decent edge. So you just wait it out until space can be made later. Yeah. Op did go for the boots early too. You don't see that too often. You see most, mostly the bottle, but it helps when he's trying to harass the Invoker, which it seems like he's doing a lot. And Ice 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 is always keeping his reactive armor charges on. Walking forward, taking the damage from the creep wave with the PMS. He just... There's so many charges that you never have an opening with the Rubik, and Rubik is now left. He realized this is just a, a pure one-on-one, -on -one and he'll leave it as such. And moves to the mid lane. Oh, Rubik does solo smoke. Let's see if he can actually try and kill Invoker. Invoker's fairly low with only one magic stick charge. It will just take a lift. Double raise, maybe one or two hits. Uh, and he should perish, but they have to bring him a little bit lower. Bubble cut there goes in. Jump up and uh, throw him back. Raise one and invis. You have a short range raise, and that will not be enough to find the invoker. So uh, fall back and we'll trigger the shrine. It's still not great for the invoker, though. I think this lane was supposed to be the one that you know, kind of assumed that's going to be a wash, but I think Shadow Fiend's uh, fairly far ahead in that lane. So enjoying that, but you still got the ticking time bomb. The, the big hero, the big player of Faceless, Ice 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 has been so good this whole tournament. You're letting him have a large amount of experience and farm up against Burning. Obviously wow. the trade-off is Burning's getting a lot himself, but is this still a trade-off that Invictus Gaming really want to make? Probably not. I think Timbersaw has the Obra Venom as well, so he can just right-click this Life Seal to kind of non-stop and kite him a little bit easier. Uh, it's, I kind of like the Orb of Venom build, especially on a melee hero like the Timbersaw. Earth Spirit's waiting. Kicks back to Shadow Fiend. Rolling Boulder going to slow him down as well. Still no Call Snap. They've got Sunstrike available for jabs, but they don't even need it. They've already found that kill. Q rotates in, but say goodbye. He'll be glimpsed back up to the top lane. Even dropping the Tombstone, which was quickly dealt with by Faceless. Yeah, nice movement by them. He wasn't able to TP in time and get that soul rip off. That would have at least secured another raise onto the invoker and put him in uh, maybe a kill threshold. But now with the infused raindrop, it's going to be extremely hard to take down jabs on the invoker. Uh, nuts as well as XY. They want to keep that pressure going. You see with the TP into mid, they have fallen off the top lane, so it's just black left up by his little lonesome on the top lane. But it's down the bottom lane where they roll in, look for it, actually kicking in, pushing the Timbersaur away. But Ice 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 walks back over, no rage available, so whirling death doesn't work. The Sunstrike waiting for Burning to rotate into it, but Nuts has already done the damage required. So Life Stealer is lost to the world as well. 3 0 in favor of Faceless. Again, yeah, I think he probably could have just. Rage. I don't Radiant's know if he had TP score right there, but this 
This is not a good life stealer game for him. He's going to have a lot of trouble. Oh, oh no. He has to rage up. Okay. Well, He's fine. He won't be sent bad. back. It's going to be tough for him, though. He has to deal with Slark and Timbersaw, both of which are not really good heroes for a life stealer to, uh, to jump on. Especially oh, now that Timber's finally hit his yeah. level 6, so you're going to add the Chakram into the mix. Well, starting to kill Timber. Yep, he's going to level 1 Timber Chain. That won't be enough, so uh, Ice 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 will be dropped. OP's the one to take it. Really important to keep the Timber Cell down right now. They need to let some give some space to the Life Stealer. Maybe later on they can get the Blink on the Sand King. He's to on top of the CS right now, and then they can get some kills to pick Burning back up from this terrible early game that he's had. I'll give him some time. I'm already looking back over towards the mid. Face just want to keep the pressure on. They're walking under Observer Wars, though. No, that's a fresh one planted down by the Undying. And you've already got Rubik hanging in the trees, too. So there's enough deep push if Face has tried to force the issue. But then again, their tower attack is quite abysmal. And QO, uh, OP, sorry, has arrived back in the mid lane. So Q went for the 1-1-2 one, one, build. Uh, I've seen a lot actually go like 2-2-0 two, two, or 2-1-1. One, one. And the max decay, I think, really helps with the laning phase if you want to try and press through the lanes a lot. And may maybe he thought that they didn't really need it for the laning phase. And once a max tombstone, by the time the first team fight brawl uh, erupts. But I don't know. They're slightly falling behind in lanes, at least bottom lane. Barbica. Unable to get XY to commit to any kind of roll away and grab interruption. I was going to keep your eyes up on this top lane. You know, Invictus Gaming are, but they're two observe wards they have placed. The second that, that Nuts thought about Radiant's moving up to the top lane, the SK knew about it. And the fact that the Earth Spirit didn't come with him now allows XSS to stay very, very close to the front line still. It doesn't even matter. I don't even think they can kill him. Sankey went for the poor man's shield, so he's extremely tanky with the additional armor from the Tranquil Boots. I do just Disruptor doesn't really offer that much damage. Just level 1 Thunder Strike. Earth Spirit more locked down than damage at this point in the game. And Black, he's struggled to even farm treads right now. So he's not offering that much. Well, Faces will get that D ward on that Radiant Double Observer ward that damage. was spotting out Ness's rotation earlier. So I'll perhaps they can make a move on the Shadow Fiend, but they can't find him. He's in the jungle, just working on some mud golems. Fire <laughs> to strike it out. Just more harassing the Earth Spirit down more than anything else. Maybe commit anything bigger. So net worth wise, it's still fairly close between the top. Like, he'll only got like 500 gold advantage going the way of the Sand King. Maybe a little bit more considering he's got a creep wave and a half. This will help jabs out the soul rip from Q. Not enough to keep him alive. So a simple cold snap. And Dying having no real way to walk out. Yeah, he was hitting for around 200 damage there. No help with the Undying. Speaking of help, like the Invoker Sunstrike, right, we've seen it like popping around a little bit. Radiant's so I'm wondering like, if that top lane gank is, is a lot more doable. Once Black completes up the treads, attack quickly, get the leash on, make sure SK can't get away, and then you've got a higher level Sunstrike just ready to drop down on whatever target you deem worthy. Radiant's yeah, that'd be pretty nice to get a kill on the Sand King, so down his blink. He's really close to it right now, just 150 gold. Maybe one or two more neutral camps will do the trick for him, and then they can get start bo uh, start the ball rolling on IG. They've only been limited to one kill in their early game on dying. Kind of died once and is struggling to find levels, whereas I think Faceless, they're playing pretty well with their greedy lineup right now. Ice 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 is being a constant nuisance on the bottom lane. Missing, missing that pull slightly, but it's enough to just, to mess with the equilibrium. We'll pull the lane back under, under the tower for Ice 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 and away from burning. So sub 10 minute blink on XXS coincides with minus timing of Invoker. And it looks like they are going to try and smoke at that Radiant Shrine. We'll try and top OP off. It looks like Timbersong is going to be the target. Heroes are not really close to sitting behind them. They really need the, perhaps the Earth Spirit there, but yeah, that observed woods or everything. And still, Ice 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 underneath the tower. Earth Spirit needs to get a good kick. Actually, Silence is over on the Rubik. A tip of chain away. Ice 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 is out. The wall is up, and Bobaka is trapped. Black will TP in. Gets the leash over on the Rubik. Thanks to the extra damage from the shark, and they find the kill and burning. He's actually pulled back in again, and they find the kill. Popping back out of the infest, and it's actually faceless. 
It looked like they were the ones who were controlling and forcing IG into a fight they didn't want to have, but Ice 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 stuck around a little bit too long. Really nice infest coming out from the Ice Dealer there. They, they were like, oh god, what do we do right now? And then, of course, OP is there with a raises to just nail Timbersaw. Timbersaw had such a good game at the start, but they're just overcommitting heroes and getting punished because so many people are just dying in the bottom lane constantly. And this, of course, frees a lot of space up for Jabs. Not the best early game for him, but he's going to recover quite easily with the Midas. He's also doing the Ancients a lot with the Alacrity. Trying to drag as much money out as possible. That would have been huge for Faces if they were able to get the kill on the Life Stealer before the SF arrived, but... A lot of what-ifs and Faceless now. They fall a little bit behind. It's still not too much. They've still got a hell of a lot to play with, good rotations to work with. They need level 6 on their uh, supports. Both of them are level 5 right now. And that jump forward, quick silence over on Live Stealer. The kick won't be able to connect. Chakram also out of position for Timbersaw. Some really good moves by burning there. I wonder where, when and where the tome was used. They need they need the disruptor level six I'll to prevent things that. like sinking from escaping, life steal from raging, probably most importantly in this game. And then you've also got the magnetize up for us, Spirit. He managed to get that, so it might have been used on him to catch up. Four man smoke from IG as they head towards the Invoker. He's been doing the Ancients, and... Spice gonna break. Jabs doesn't react in time, so a blink in. Quick Virus Strike, they get the extra control from the Rubik. No major abilities have to be triggered, and you actually got a Lacrity stolen. Not a bad thing to have when SF's looking to beat down that Tier 1 tower in mid. Shadow Fiend's really close to his Shadow Blade. I'm curious to see what Black's gonna go for. The blink is okay here, but at the same time, I don't really think he can survive if he just blinks in. Shadow Fiend, I think, is one of the best heroes to deal with the Slarp, and because he does so much damage that goes through the Shadow Dance, and... Dyer's middle tower is under I think the Silver Edge uh, would be pretty good for him to limit Life Stealer's damage and Shadow Fiend Break, not attack. particularly useful in terms of disabling passives, but lowering their damage output is quite important. Mm -hmm. But that's still going to be a little bit away for him to reach, setting a 2.3k. And knowing that Invictus Gaming will be coming to his lane soon. It's the last remaining T1 attack. tower for Team Faceless, so double smoke. Yep. Disruptor and the Earth Spirit looking for a target on the bottom lane. Burning's actually trying to work on an Ancient Stack. That's pretty difficult for him to take out. He's not that strong. I mean, he doesn't have the Shrine, but he, he can at least just toggle his way through. Oh, the Sunstrike. They see him! The Observer Ward was watching it the entire time. So Jabs gets a freebie. Yeah, usually the Radiant's Ancient Stacks are reserved for heroes attack. like Shadow Fiend, who... Radiant Firstly, can do it from range, which is much safer, and doesn't have to tank it much at all. That the courier, what the heck? Yeah, the ancient thunderhide. Do it. <laughs> I know it, it got aggroed and then it just started Radiant attacking the courier. But I didn't see anything around it. Radiant's just want some chicken, man. Under attack. Only I can trust you. Yeah, it doesn't know what it's doing. Top lane, Timbersaw, the epicenter. He did actually have a little bit of resistance. That Huda Defiance, it might just keep Ice 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 alive. A chain up in one second time pulls him away from the undying minions. Meanwhile, in middle lane, a quick silence kick. Sunstrike's coming in again. Bobaka gets hit pretty hard. Where's that extra bit of damage? It will be there. Just from the Magnetize, but back into the lane. Jabs is the one being caught. He'll go invis. Where's the detection? They do not even have it at the moment. The wall comes up to keep burning under control. Meanwhile, Sand King, Black jumps onto him. That sentry ward was down for face, so they were the ones with a vision advantage. Wow, they're just lacking a tiny bit of damage for all these fights. <laughs> Nuts. He's got burning locked in that, but unfortunately gets blocked up by his own creep wave, so it's negligible damage, but Q gets caught rotating back off the top lane. No leash from Black. So they won't find the kill over on the Undying. Radiant's and they went for two big kills attack. of the same thing onto the cores, but just lacking a tiny bit. But yeah, maybe 100 damage on the Timbersaw, and maybe a couple hundred damage on the Invoker. And I think a lot of this has to do with the life steal just being severely impaired in the early game. Like if he had a Blightstone or, you know, even an Ogre Club, might have been able to uh, kill the Invoker Radiant's bottom at that tower point. Is and this keeps attack. happening with Faceless. 10-15 minutes in, there's always something where they just get a couple of picks to give their core some breathing room. And some big ones as well, like, hey, you, you killed off the Live Stealer, you killed off the Sand King, you got some extra ones on the side. 
they're getting the picks that they need for sure, and a lot of space for the Slark. So it's slow paced. I think that the uh, Shadow Fiend in particular is farming very well on IG. OP's uh, doing his job, but at the same time, on, on the side of Faceless, you have Invoker with a Midas and a Slark just constantly farming up the jungle, and Timbersaw all. Uh, pushing out the lanes very, very aggressively. Radiant's so, yeah, three heroes Observer farming attack. versus the one on the Shadow Fiend that's been doing very, very well. Yep. And they're desperate now. They have a smoke. I don't know if they want to blow through so many smokes, though. And it seems like they really do want to kill right now, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get one. It seems like the same issue, like the VP almost Black's had. Like, like, how do you... Might be in trouble in mid. Are they going to jump on him? There's your jump. Blink. Borrow. Knocks in the neighborhood. Throws down the ulti, but Black already dead. Yeah, he uses Dark Pack to try and push out the wave, and that was definitely the go sign uh, for Invictus Gaming. And sweeping into Roche immediately after a big core kill. And they kind of know what's happening over here, but they have a lot of minus armor from the Shadow Beam. Level 2 present the Dark Lord. That should be enough at least to yeah, take it, it down before the Slark respawns. They can dissuade him. Jabs might be able to have a little bit of a scout. The Sun Strike kicks in, but it hits both Roshan as well as the Life Stealer. And with the tombstone down, it is an easy Aegis into the hands of the life stealer. But this is still the fa same face that's going to play. Like, okay, Burning was pushing in the top lane. IG decided to ignore it. They killed off the mid lane. That was great. But Jabs is now pushing at the bottom lane. You you bring Ice 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 back up to the top lane, and this is going to split up the IG lineup. I'm wondering if they can even really utilize the Aegis beyond taking the golden experience that Roshan offered. It will at least buy us some more time for Burning to get Rolling. back to far network. Yeah, that boulder won't reach for the kick. Well, Sunstrike's coming in. They turn on the silence and a quick jump forward. It was a Sharkham that did the work, but in comes Livestealer in the paws of the Sand King. I should say, claws of the Sand King. Black able to shadow dance himself away to safety. So a one-for-one -one trade off for some heavy rotations from IG. Faces just need to slow the game down a little bit, you know, keep it to like a couple of kills every couple of minutes and outscale. I don't really foresee I'll them being in that. that big of danger into the late game. They're like heroes aren't that vulnerable to uh, the life stealer bomb because Sinking hasn't been able to get involved in too many kills. He had the fantastic, fantastic start most CS, but now he's number six on net worth because they missed out on uh, those two kills. Oh, they're coming again, faceless. I know you don't want them to have any kind of like major fight, but if they can attack into the T1 tower, the Sentry Ward was having a look at Black. I think Black also flagged that because he lost his ultimate for a second. Yeah, he knows what's going on there. And here we go again. Jabs pushing the bottom lane. He's got so much space. Yeah, uh, he's he's staring at the barrel of having his Aghanim set up after already having the Yules. Yeah, he's just been free farming all game, minus the one death uh, mid and. The super early lane phase. Uh, this observed ward again is doing its work. It's the observed ward that's responsible for live stealer being dead. And oh, they didn't find the ob sitting on top of the on top Radiant's of the shrine. Yeah, I don't, think, century. I don't think they expect that it reaches that far to the left. Sinking, looking for a prey. SS moving over. He found ice, ice, ice. Starts the attack. A quick tipper chain away with a shark from Q's going to drop down low. That's why he goes into the ulti form. And uh, well, it's time to watch the global. That is Ice Ice Ice's specialty right there. Actually helping Jabs farm, it Radiant's went through the Centaur camp. <laughs> it's straight back to Ice Ice Ice. Meanwhile, Black on the run. They actually leashed up on the Sand King. But very difficult to kill a Slark. Shadow Dance, Dark Pack, Shadow Blade, a lot of escape mechanisms for him. I don't think they're getting much value out of the Undying at all. Like, they pressure to Slark a tiny bit, but it didn't really help him win their lanes at all. And I highly doubt he's going to be able to farm a Scepter anytime soon and transition into that mid-game fighting tanky hero that they want him to be. Nowhere close to a mech either for a little bit of earlier team fight. Boy, this... I'm having that niggling little feeling. Like I'm just like looking at, looking at IG... And their lineup looks fantastic. It looks like it's got so much to work with, but they're unable to utilize any of it. And we're, and we're turning into this whole faceless... I, wanna, I don't even want to say comeback, because they're not that far behind, but... Like, Face is in a position where if they keep playing like this, they're going to win the game. 
Yeah, I, I think at some point it's gonna get to that, but oh, point get plenty of in the meantime. There we go. See, that's that's the kind of stuff. This is what IG like. Ernie was saying on, on the panel before the slaughter and life sealer combination. SK becomes part of that, and that's where they created a lot of space in the past. I agree. I think Slaughter skills a lot better, though. So, like, you don't have to worry so much about going late game because Slaughter has the amplified damage, which just makes tanking the life still ridiculously difficult. Sinking provides uh, maybe slightly more lockdown, but nowhere close to the damage amplification that uh, that the Slaughter can provide. So, in later game, they're gonna not be as useful with the Dyer's sinking life stealer versus Dyer's the Slaughter top. life stealer. Well, oh, tier two tower on top lane. Faces are going to let it go, though. Fortified up just by a little bit of time, and that's because Black's pushing into the bottom lane with a catapult. Radiant's He's got help in the neighborhood. Jab showed himself in mid and then went di then disappeared. So Radiant's Invictus Gaming probably won't want to aggressively TP down Radiant's for their own tier two tower to defend it. So they're just happy for the straight tier two for tier two trade. Okay, as I say that, here comes your first TP. That's the life stealer in. The four spirits do the work, so Jab still gets the last hit. And they're already bailing out. Sunstrike looking for the Sand King, looking for him to juke, but they glimpse him back over again, away from Timbersaw with a Chakram and the chain forward. The Yule Scepter of that SK won't buy a lot of time. Back down to the Radiant Jungle, easy damage into the Earth Spirit. So Bernie will find an extra kill, but Black, no, he's not going to go on the hunt. Doesn't have vision of OP. I think he's just dying a lot. He's not really with his team. I think he could be getting a few more picks with the life stealer, not like overly aggressive, but enough to the point where Faceless can't just run around the map doing whatever they want to do. Slark is providing a lot of vision just being on the bottom side of the map, especially during nighttime. I think IG feel very scared to go up and ward in that area, and IG, they currently only have one observer ward close uh, to the Roshan, and I doubt that Faceless will allow them to sneak that Aegis once more so easily. They've got a lot more to work around with now. It's maybe Timbersaw finally going to bring down this T1 tower. Support's coming over from Burning. And then again, actually, he's just sitting there farming. The creep wave will do the work. Radiance top tower is under attack. So we have like five heroes, relatively similar net worth. I guess the Shadow Fiend's <laughs> kind of getting ahead of everyone. Uh, but the Sinking's falling behind, so it's about even. I would say in terms of net worth, I still favor Faces' late game a little bit more. None of the team fights have really turned up at all. I think that Earth Spirit and Disruptor are still very, very good in the later game uh, because of their team fight ultimates and mass silences, whereas I think Undying is going to fall off uh, very, very quickly, if not already. Sand King hunting again. But the Undying's just trying to hold the mid lane, but he can't D-push unless he was easy to pay for that. Quick timber chain up from Timbersaw, the hunt is on, but Ice Ice Ice, if he gets out in time, which he will do so, it's wasted time for Invictus Gaming. Four heroes on top, they don't gain anything in the Undying as they're defending, but Jabs, you'll scepter up, and here comes your combination. Sunstrike, Meteorite, the burn won't be enough, but with a call sap and kick from XY, the <laughs> Ice Ice will fall. Ice Ice is owning them, like, just by not dying and forcing them to always constantly kill him. He's died a few times, but his farm is still incredibly uh, high. He's he's fifth on net worth, but it's still very close to number one and number two. Yep. Jump forward. They found their target. It's going to be the Invoker. Quick Yule Scepter up. Can he actually invoke Invis? No. Nope. Burning is there, and they'll also get the Disruptor with him. Radiance middle tower is under one benefit of IG's lineup too is they have the minus armor from the Shadow Fiend. So despite like, still, like not having the greatest early game, he can still throw out a lot of damage. Uh, even with the absence of a uh, cross of haste, and I think they can just do road fairies too. It's also better for having a ton of minus on XS. <laughs> now you see just how much damage the Timbersaw can do with a little bit of farm, and he's hoping for kills. Okay, Ice 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 going in very deep, looking for the Chakram kill, won't happen. Now he's going to chain back out again. A lot of life in the regeneration, doesn't have as many reactive armor as actually probably wants to go that deep. Meanwhile, Black playing around with Burning forces him to rage up, and Invictus Gaming are wondering who they're meant to be trying to kill. Timbersaw has to be a little bit careful now that there's a Silver Edge on the Shadow Fiend. Double so a ton damage. of minus armor on the Timbersaw and will make him feel a little bit fluffy. So he's going to have to pick up some sort of armor item. Looks like Shiva's Guard will be his next calling. Do you think that's enough when you get the Shiva's Guard, or is it actually more worthwhile finding something that's going to break the break? I think the Shiva's Guard is going to be good enough. What other item would there be? You don't know. know. I, I have nothing in the list. 
You can't get out of break anymore with, with this spells. So, so, you, so again, getting I, I guess you could sense. you can get Yules or Habs, but Yules is usually versus uh, Silences and Orchids. Um, Yules is also that that really early earlier game item. Than yeah, now. he doesn't need Yules. He just needs more armor and just kind of walk in there, pull the reactive armor, and then really go in there. Well. Faces for the first time really being grouped up. They have four heroes together. Now the Observe Ward, I don't know if it actually caught the edge of the smoke. I believe it did. They have a gem now on the side. Oh, Black. Hello. Well, Undying. He might be able to get his tombstone off. No, he can't. Instantly silenced, and they go for the kick. They found the SK, and that gem of true side is instantly lost. Oh, I know that feeling. And OP is on the run. The Gem of Truesight, they're pulling him back with a glimpse. OP will trigger the BKB. He's down the back lines. Nuts waiting it out. He's going to keep his distance. He's low on life. So there goes your Requiem of Souls. Black also retreating back out. But you know Ice 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 wants to initiate four with the Whirl and get the perfect kick. Shadow Fiend will be lost. And it's faceless. Rampaging through the Radiant Jungle after Bobaka. Chain forward and there will be more than enough. An extra kick just to hold him in position. Four heroes, actually, no, yeah, four heroes lost. The Undying is so low, he's already respawned. Radiant and the Tier 2 tower as well. Faces will knock Radiant on the door 27 minutes oh. into this game. That was pretty much the perfect time for Faces to smoke as they were uh, trying to de-war with a fresh gem on the Sand King. And Timber Saw is up in front, but he is... He's losing a lot of life. That Burrow Strike is right on the money, too. With a kick forward, a quick chain back out again. The Yule Scepter up. Jams by some time. SF is still not up, so there's not a huge amount of damage. With Black Dead for Faceless, they don't have a lot to work with either. They're trying to make the most out of the Miss Chain, which came out from Ice Ice Ice, but with the Shark from in the Whirling Pet, he actually has enough to kill off first the SK and go back in on burning he's low on life but he may not care they find enough and the glimpse Q it is not his day he'll go down as well my god Timbersaw he has like 50 HP regen a second with the uh, max reaction and with the talent and like he's kind of sitting at low HP but they always constantly think they can kill him but yeah he skipped on the talent too he's regenerating by having the 15 plus intelligence over the 14 health regen. Yeah, I saw him at 50 before. That's still ridiculous. <laughs> uh, most of the time I see the health regen, but until, I mean, I don't, he's not having that much trouble surviving. He really isn't. 20 bloodstone charges now on this Timbersaw. Go! The Shiva's gone only 700 away from being completed as well. And the SF is now the only one in the top four for that net worth race. I kind of just assumed he took the health regen. Yeah, 15 intel is... It, I mean, it gives a little bit of spell amp, but rarely does Timberza actually go through his entire mana pool unless you never go home to heal, which I guess he's kind of doing right now, especially when you have this many bloodstone charges. Yep. Considering how long he's been in these fights, too. Like, he starts the fight and he ends the fight. And in fact, goes back into the fight crazily. But this has always been like one of the big signature heroes of Ice Ice Ice. That Timbersaw. There's many highlight clips. You can you can go back years for Ice 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 and find the clips of him with the perfect calculation of how much life, how much mana he's got. IG's scared. They want to do Roche, but they don't feel comfortable doing it. And I don't think they have any smokes left in their inventory. So they definitely don't feel comfortable enough taking a smoke, but they will try and de-ward around the area with a reacquired gem and Dire side has I'll been placing four just really nice picks if they can reach him. Do they have the No, they don't have the vision. I don't think killing Earth Spirit is big enough for them to go for Roche though. Because he can easily buy back and go into the uh, shrine. So that observer ward, which was freshly placed right after XX was rewarded, will catch out the Earth Spirit. And he is dead, and they will be able to take down the Observer Ward in the meantime. So 40 seconds left on his respawn. SF already heading inside the pit. He sees a Force Spirit. Force Spirit just despawned, though. OP might be able to take down the Roche for free. Jabs is heading over there, but this Roche is gone. Here comes Ice Ice Ice. Chain forward. The Chakram flies inside the pit with the Shiva's guard. Roshan killed by the Dire. Burning will let the Aegis of his possession, but the Storm is beautiful. It's holding Burning in position. He may actually have to trigger this Aegis Knight. It's an early Timber, Ch Timber Chain away. And the Aegis does actually get burnt. He just dropped the sacrifices himself. 
but IG don't have that immortality to go for a bigger push play. That was the tiny window that they needed to. I, the Jabs was not super vigilant about the about the uh, four spirit. It's, it's a, that was like 10 seconds that they possibly could have taken Roche, and Faces Boy didn't cover that possibility. They had the Shrine still available to them, and kind of just worried about the Sand King gem, which has proven to be a constant issue. The Slark can't really roam around free because of this. What have we here? Now he's actually lucky to have that gem back again, considering it was, dropped by, it was dropped by Faceless when they were going for their other push. Yeah, if, if, if Faceless still had the gem, they would have easily been able to take Roche themselves, and kind of spiral out of control, but because they lost a gem, now they have to play on the back foot, build more defensive items. There is a BKB now on Slark, so it can actually man up uh, in the fights. And also just going to turn this into a big split push game for them all. And I actually wonder who wins on that. Like, Timbersaw pushes really, really quickly, and then can just BT into the lane, and then Invoker can push the side lanes, and then also just BT into the lanes. How does Invictus Gaming deal with the side lanes when Faceless do this? And they've done it before, you know it's coming. They want to split up IG, can IG force the issue? Do they have enough of an opening? They definitely have the damage with Sand King and Life Sealer inside of him and the break on the Shadow Fiend, they can kill anyone. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not they can catch them. And right now Faceless are playing very well without that many Observer Wars around the map. They're kind of sensing around where the Sand King's going to be, knowing that they're going to move us five because they don't want to lose a gem again. The scan una unable to connect from Faceless. Oh, it looks like it's uh, a group up. It's going to be a three-man smoke, well deep, away from any potential observer wards from IG, but the only IG aggressive ward they got on, on the dire side of the river is this one is up on the northern half of the map. Expecting a gank on the Timbersaw. If you're IG and you're tired of Switch, which is usually how you would react, just by main gank the Timbersaw, but not when they're all sitting right behind you. Okay, well, when Timber moves towards the mid lane, the Observe Ward's going to see that, and they are, they are in a pretty good position. There's your infest, so SK is looking to do it. But Faceless isn't too far behind, and they know it. They, they have no vision. IG have no idea where the heroes of Faceless are. Yeah, they, they can't, can't go outside. They can't open the map up at all. It's a big problem. They just feel confined, forced to five man in this tiny little quadrant of the map that is the bottom left. There goes that smoke from the Undying. So they put three together and they'll use the SF as bait. And he does look like bait. A jabs, starts the TP. Oh, he broke the smoke on Sand King as well as Rubik. We were already saying before how very few smokes we thought IG actually has. And if they get the Timbersaw, it may be worth it. The Shark Room out from Bobacut, they do kill him. Uh, he doesn't even get the, the eye off on the blood so It's a big kill for them. Good money going into burning, almost 500 for it. They burn through some of the Bloodstone charges. Quick TP up towards the top, prep the epicenter. They're looking for the second core kill. It'll be Jabs. The Lincoln Sphere protects him from first the Boris Strike hit, but the Shark Rooms are down. Jabs doesn't have enough life to survive that. Black needs to get some revenge. If Faces are going to try and repair the damage that's been done, but it's so hard. The Storm is down, but the double Barrow Strike, it creates enough space. No, Tempest already back to front lines with the Shiva's Guard. Q, you're probably going to feed more life here as OP winds up the Requiem of Souls. You also have to protecting Ice 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 for the moment. He's still looking for the better target over towards the Sand King, but this fight is chaos for Faces. They need to actually focus down targets, but they're losing too many heroes. It's all going to become the Ice 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 Show. Whirling Death to steal it. You don't have enough life to actually get back out again. The chain never never connects, and Invictus Gaming come out on top. One by one, faceless fall. It's a very uncoordinated play from them. First Timbersaw dies, and then Invoker gets caught out, and then they decide to fight when both of them are dead. Timbersaw didn't have enough Bloodstone charges to respawn instantly. I think he only had like, what, 20, I think, during the first death? And now he's down to nine. Dropping very, very quickly, and the power spike for OP, the courier is bringing the rest of Bloodthorn out in the courier at the moment for SF. That's a huge swing when it comes to the experience. Yeah, the Shadow Fiend's doing a ton of damage in the fights too. Slark was trying to beat on him in the, in the fight, but could not do enough damage. No Scotty on him. I don't believe he had Bash for that fight either. But they need to be able to limit his damage output. They did kill Burning very on, very early on in the fight. Timbersaw did a good job of doing that, but He's been a little bit cocky in these past couple of fights, and his net worth has suffered as a result. 
They probably need BKB on the Invoker. I don't know. It just seems like he dies all the time, and the Lincoln Sphere isn't going to save him because the Life Sealer just opened wounds after the Burrow Strike. Yeah. Like it, it protected him from, from the original stun, but after that point, it's still... Yeah. Either either a BKB or a Blink, because you can just use the Yule's Blink very often to save yourself. Well, he's with you on the BKB, sitting there in his quick buy. Ice 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 was set back a, a decent way, too. Yeah. Like, the fact that he's, he's walking around, still shy of that Aghanim Scepter. I think he expected his team to be around him during that bottom fight, but they kind of just all ditched, ditched him. Like, you either play around your... Uh, you have to play around your from side. Man. There's money, money, money. I'm dying! Your contribution is almost too easy for Faceless to take. That's some free stacks for Slark. He's gonna be happy with that 20 agility. Especially if they can find another hero of IG outside the base, but IG are preparing for the defense. This infested SK. He does have his epicenter up as well, will bring the vision. So Black just can't hide, Epicenter starts channeling, they try and back out this one with a 4 stop. They push Slark far enough away, he can trigger the BKB, burning, Rage wears off, and now with the extra dust, they have all the reveal, and the kick is perfect. Rubik caught by it, the Sunstrike will connect, Life Stealer down to half, maybe two thirds of his life, glimpse back in again. Ice 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 has no trees to jump to that will bring him in. And now with the Shrine also being triggered, burning, regenerating up quickly, but faceless. Fortification will stop them from taking the tier 3 tower. Not to mention OP standing in the front line too. That was a really nice four staff on the disruptor. Bottom of time for the for the Slark to pop his ultimate and pop his BKB. And faces are already out. They have big damage issues if Shadow Fiend's not hitting anyone. Life Stealer is not able to do enough in the fights. Right it looks now. like SF's also waiting with that with that silver edge. Like he's always waiting for Timbersaw to come close. So he never initiates with it. Yeah, it's quite nice. I, I do think that's going to be a big part. Or if he, if the Starks like BKBs, he can just break him and then uh, just man up on him in the fight. So I think he needs to save it for the middle of the fight and not for initiation. <laughs> Besides, they do Radiant have the gem on their spirit. Okay, Roshan again. Faceless. TP's coming over. Blink Barrow, this could be huge. If they can do it around Roshan, Timbersaw needs a way to get out of it. He won't be able to dead for almost a full minute. So Black finds Burning, gets the extra bash. Life Stealer dropping quickly. Black with 31 stolen essence. He's going to hit like an absolute truck over towards the Undying with a rolling ball of four. They'll keep the Rubik there as well. So Undying is down. And Burbaka are on the run too, but that fresh gem of True Sight picked up by the Earth Spirit. That's what gave them that vision advantage. And Faceless, they will trade. The timber saw, but they'll get a lot in return. Almost actually claimed OP Radiance as well. Oh, no. <laughs> Sunstrike actually just came off cooldown, but he didn't try for the SF. Yeah, that was a DD on the Slark, on top of having tons of stacks. So he's hitting for like 300, 400 more than he would normally. And Bernie's like, what the hell is hitting me so hard? <laughs> Life steal is meant to be a lot tankier than that. Rubik will buy back. They take out the tier 3 tower. The melee rack takes a little bit of damage. Ow, and it's an early roast respawn faceless. Gonna be checking that immediately. Or are they? Timbers arrived at the top lane. They pinged it out, but 20 seconds left on the life sealer. At least they can get a melee rack. Yep, that's the goal. Blink burrow forward. Black protected by that Lincoln Speed that was shed on him. Ice, ice, ice. Remember, you're in pretty deep. The Yule Scepter sends him up and towards the M mid chain. They have Victus Gaming. They lose their top melee racks. He's still hurting very hard. They killed the shrine very quickly with the with the slurp. So much attack speed and damage. Does he have his next item coming out the courier? Yep, it's the Abyssal Blade. So now they've actually got the guaranteed control from Black. He didn't even look inside the pit. He walked on the edge of it but never got the vision. I thought they were gonna ping on the shrine and then go for the pit. But I think, he, I think maybe he was a little bit scared. Yeah, he didn't have a Shadow Dance on, so they needed to keep ward around that area. And Aerospear is trying to find out where the wards are, but he isn't and he's able to catch either of them. Okay, Black is picking. <laughs> he's picking the, almost the exact spot of the Observer Ward. So all XY has to do is just move down. They still have one more over there, though, and IG, they know that Roshan is up. Faceless know that Roshan is up. Faces actually smoke for this, too. They smoked up three heroes. And the line is drawn. 
XXS standing right next to that observer ward, but not exactly sure of the approach that faces are going to take. But they will be safe. Take down the shrine first. And could this be the move for them to actually move inside the rose? They have the four spirit sitting in there this time, so yep. IG cannot sneak it like they did the last two times. Nice item for OP before this fight's going to begin. Picks up the satanic. A lot of extra life steal. Difficult for faces if they can't instantly kill him off. At the same time, if Black has that Abyssal Blade, life's going to become very, very difficult too. Yeah, I think you can just stick on the Shadow Fiend the entire time. Break him and then just stun lock him until he's forced to concede. Yeah, push on bottom lane. Ice Ice is back down there again. And with the creep waves pushing in and the Shrine still being up for the Dire side, not to mention the Forge Spirit. That's actually exactly where Timbersaw is going. They want the kill over on Q and they've found it. The Sunstrike is going to hit its mark. And with the Timber Chain through, they find the kill and Isolated SF. The Abyssal Blade is still up. Triggers it. Tornado flies through. Doesn't anybody else, but they bring down the SF. No SF. He doesn't have buyback. 100 seconds on the sidelines. If Black can get this leash on the Epicenter, maybe SK can create a little bit of space, but Life still controlled and he's gone as well. 80 seconds for buybacks available, a quick fire strike, her spirit, so low on life, force up up from the disruptor, they're like she, actually from himself, just keeping him alive, they move over to Bobaka, but inside the base, Faceless can own this now if they want to, but double buybacks from IG, it's not worth the risk, Faceless can retreat and look to Roshan. The Shadow Fiend just felt so useless there in that fight, just getting completely locked down by the, the Slark. I don't even think he committed Abyssal Blade to him that early in the fight, if at all. Uh, he waited he, yeah, he waited, waited so long for it. And now Roshan is... It's so simple for them to take. Even trying to Sunstrike out the Rubik. Yep, he's trying. Heal back up. Aegis and Cheese now in the possession of Faceless. They also still have a ton of stacks on Sunk. He's still stealing 75 agility for a good minute, maybe 10, 15 seconds. So I think they can easily fight right now. It's a great time for the Slark. He's already looking for it with a glimpse. Oh, it is not Undying's day. Q wants to go on the run, the kick. He's waiting for it, XY. But Black's already got the kill, not to mention again, continuously stealing the essence. They'll move over the Rubik and Invictus Gaming. They're dropping like flies. Three heroes still down. There goes your mid melee, and they are going down to the bottom lane. This was the first tower the Faceless started when they entered, a, entered the IG base. And it's a very quick work to finish the job. Waiting in the tree lines. It was the same position. Earth Spirit, he rolling boulders away. The storm is down. Life steals controlled. Black committing the Abyssal Blade, and this is it. They've lost too many. Invictus Gaming, they just don't have the manpower anymore. And Faceless will take them out of Dota Pit and have kept themselves a lower bracket final position. Well played, a Faceless. They keep on going, making their run through a lower bracket. I think that OP uh, played very, very well, but I think Ice 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 has completely broke this game wide open with this play on the bottom lane, avoiding a couple of smoke ganks and just completely wasting IG's uh, time and crippling burning. And Ice 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 has been, for me, the player of almost this tournament for how well he has played, the amount of work he's done. 8 5 15, he had 26,000 net worth, but everything, it was space created by Faceless. There's no scoreboard stat for that. There, there really isn't. There really isn't. And you look at it, like you see how much space gets created for Black. Like Black has always been one of these players where you've said, you know what, you give him just a small amount of time and he will catch up. He will always get ahead. 15 to 9 on a slark. He had all the momentum in the world and the life stealer. But you want to look back to that double damage fight. Like that kind of reflects just how much presence the black had. He was he was destroying Invictus Gaming. He definitely was. I don't think Invictus Gaming really did much in the